We've been talking about tax-free reorganizations, and in this video we're going to discuss the Type B tax-free reorganization. So a Type B reorganization is a transaction that allows one corporation to acquire another corporation tax-free with neither the target nor the purchaser nor the target shareholders incurring any kind of tax by basically exchanging stock for stock. So let's say that we have one corporation, let's say you're the director of flying cat skydiving and you teach cats how to skydive and you want to acquire Surfing Kittens, which is a company that teaches kittens how to surf in the ocean. And so you want to acquire Surfing Kittens, but you don't want to pay any tax. So you say, you know what, I noticed that the target shareholders, right, so those are the shareholders of Surfing Kittens. So that, that's sure, let's just say it's one shareholder and that person has 100 shares of stock. Uh, with a fair market value of $100,000. And so you say, you know what? I'm going to give some flying cat skydiving stock to surfing kittens. So let's say you give 500 shares of flying cat skydiving stock that are worth, let's, let's say the fair market value is $100,000. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing the deal, right? So $100,000 worth of stock you give to surfing kittens. And in exchange, what you're going to get is ba basically you're going to give this to the target shareholder. So the target shareholder is going to receive the 500 shares in Flying Cat Skydiving. And now what does Flying Cat Skydiving get? They're going to get the 100 shares from that target shareholder. Now the target shareholder is going to, they're not going to recognize any gain. They're going to get a substituted basis in the new shares that they're getting, right? Because they're getting rid of these 100 shares. Those are going to Flying Cat Skydiving. So their adjusted basis, which I have this AB here, that's the adjusted basis of the target shareholder stock, that's 40,000. And so that's gonna be their basis in the new shares and the 500 shares they're receiving of Flying Cat Skydiving. So they're getting a substituted basis of 40,000. So they're not stepping up their basis. And then Flying Cat Skydiving, they're gonna basically control now this surfing kittens, although they're continue to operate it as a subsidiary. Doesn't have to be that way, but usually that's the case with a type B. And so the assets, so the adjusted basis of the assets for surfing kittens, they're at 25,000 and those are not going to be stepped up because there's, there's, there's no gain here, there's no taxable gain, there's no step up in basis of the assets at all. So type B is a, a nice little transaction that allows you to just basically swap stock for stock and get a tax-free acquisition, but there are some important rules. Now, one good thing is that shareholder approval is generally not required for the type B. However, you have to have at least 80% control of the target, which in this case would be surfing kittens. Uh, flying cat skydiving would have to have at least 80% control immediately after the transaction. So what does 80% control mean? It means 80% of the combined voting power of all classes of voting stock and 80% of any non-voting stock, right? So you, you don't have to, in, in this example we have where basically Flying Cat was getting 100% of the shares, but doesn't have to be. It could have been 90 shares and so forth. As long as you have at least 80% control immediately afterwards, it can qualify potentially as a type B. Now, here is something that's very important. The voting stock, voting stock has to be 100% of the consideration. Remember, consideration is what the purchasing organization or the purchasing corporation is giving to the to the target, right? Or in this case, the target shareholders. So you're giving a, a voting stock of flying cat skydiving. It can't be any kind of boot or oh, but we're going to give cash and stock. It doesn't work, right? Remember, with Type A, you could have you could have some boot. You could throw in some cash with some voting voting stock here voting stock of the purchasing corporation has to be everything right there are tiny exceptions like for example if there's some kind of fractional share let's say the target shareholder has one quarter share or something like left over you could give them cash for that uh, but that's kind of a tiny exception and in some cases maybe where the purchasing corporation could pay some of the legal fees of the target but generally speaking just think of it like this, voting stock has to be 100% of the consideration, otherwise it's not gonna qualify as a type B tax-free reorganization. Now, one nice thing is that the, the purchasing corporation, in this case, Flying Cat Skydiving, is not going to assume any of the target's liabilities. Now, I didn't list any liabilities up here for Surfing Kittens, but let's just say that Surfing Kittens had some liabilities or some unknown liabilities. Well, generally, in a Type B, uh, the purchasing corporation is going to continue to operate the target, Surfing Kittens, as a subsidiary. 
So just because it controls the subsidiary does not mean the flying cat skydiving necessarily takes on the liabilities of surfing kittens, right? So any liabilities that surfing kittens has continue to be the liabilities of surfing kittens. So you're not automatically going to get stuck with the target's liabilities. And as I mentioned, you're, you're not going to receive any stepped up basis. And the reason is you're, you're not paying any tax. Uh, and also remember when we talked about section 338, and when you could elect to, to have a stepped up basis and so you cannot do that with a type B, so that's not an option. And of course, as we mentioned, you know, the, the target shareholders are gonna receive a substituted basis. So none of the assets are getting stepped up because nobody's paying any tax on them. Now, I wanna talk about a few important notes. And one is this idea, you might hear the phrase of old and cold stock. So what old and cold stock means is this. So we, we talked about how Basically, you have to give at least, uh, or 100% of the consideration has to be voting stock, and you have to have at least 80% control ap immediately afterwards. But what if, what if, let me give you a hypothetical, what if Flying Cat Skydiving had acquired, let's say, 10% of surfing kittens with cash, so they had paid, let's say they had paid cash for 10% of surfing kittens, let's say, I don't know, nine years ago. Okay, so they paid 10% cash nine years ago. Does that mess? So let's say right now, for example, that, that they now acquired. So here we have them acquiring 100%. But let's say that they now acquire, uh, um, let's say, 75%. So they already owned 10%, right? They paid cash nine years ago and they had 10%. And now they issue stock for surfing kitten stock. So it's stock for stock to get an additional 75%. So if you add them up, you'd say, okay, immediately afterwards, now Flying Cat would own 85% of surfing kittens. So it would meet the 80% control, but wait a minute, you might be thinking, hey, well that 10%, initially that's what we call the old and cold stock. They, they paid cash for that. Doesn't that bust up this B? Doesn't it, doesn't it you know, kind of screw up our transaction? Not necessarily, it depends was this part of an integrated plan right so if they paid cash nine years ago and had no idea that oh well we're eventually gonna go and and give them stock for another 75 percent of the corporation and try and get a type b reorganization if this is not part of one big plan then in this old and cold stock is okay and so this 10 percent can be added to the 75 to get to the 85 not a problem however if you are being slick and you said one week ago, hey, you know what, let me pay cash uh, for 10% of the company and then a week later I'll say, oh, I'll give you stock for, the, for 75%. Hey, I didn't know that a week ago I was gonna do this. Well, the IRS isn't gonna buy that. So if it seemed to be part of a plan, an integrated plan, then the IRS will collapse all the steps into one transaction and the fact that you paid cash will prevent you from having type B. However, if it's not part of an integrated plan, then it's the old and cold stock does not create a problem. Also, you can have what's called a creeping acquisition. A creeping acquisition is you could have a number of, it, it doesn't have to be, so, so let's forget about the, the idea of giving cash now at all. Now we're just thinking of just stock for stock, but let's say that you give some stock for stock on January 1st, and then you do some more on March 15th, and then on June 30th, so you're going throughout the year or throughout a period of time, it's this creeping acquisition where you're exchanging stock, you're giving voting stock, right? As consideration, there's no cash, there's no boot, anything like that. You're giving voting stock, but you're doing it gradually over time. And so ultimately, as long as it's part of an integrated plan and there's no boot involved or anything like that, then once you get 80% control, then you have a type B reorganization. And so you can have a creeping acquisition as part of integrated plan. It's not gonna create any kind of an issue and you can have a tax-free type B reorganization.